I've even seen some some videos as you see on the internet right they get passed around I've seen some videos where there's moms like it's usually like in the countryside of third world countries but it happens elsewhere too where moms of children or even selling their own kids into an industry or to someone and once they've sold the child they have no there's no guarantee or they have no guarantee of the safety of that child afterwards they 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 will probably never know what happens to that child after that. So this has you question, well, do they love their kids at all? But then again, there's that old quote, love flies when poverty enters. When poverty enters, love flies out the window. Or love flies out the window when poverty enters. It means like love is kind of luxury or being able to continue it is a kind of luxury because let's just think if you, if you are a small family maybe even a, a, an uneducated family and without access to contraception or reproductive control with quite a few kids What do you, I mean, you're going to keep having kids, but then you have to think, do we have enough food for these kids? Do we have enough to clothe them? Can I send them to school? And if the answer is no, usually to all three of those questions, then Do you love that child and then if maybe if you love them then you'd think okay the best thing for this child would be to send them out into the world then they're on their own and I can't provide for this child but maybe this child stands a chance a, a snowball's chance a snowball's chance in hell this child stands a chance out there in a world maybe They'll be in a business, but maybe somehow through time, over time they can get better at whatever it is they happen to be doing and up the ranks and do well for themselves. But just here with me, they'll never survive. So maybe in a form, it is a kind of love, but it's it's <laughs> balls to the wall. They, they, they haven't had the, they just don't have a choice. When, when you keep your child with you at home and you all just starve, or have them go out and try and find their own way in the world, never mind the fact that they're eight years old. I've seen quite a few videos where, where like where it's sort of child trafficking, busting by people who are, who are, who have posed as maybe pedophiles etc online but actually like they're they're police in plain clothes or they're basically out to bust potential customers we have there are the perpetrators I mean as just from from these videos as well I mean a, a person posing as a pedophile on a website looking or even as a mom or as a child that's uh, th th there's no shortage of, of people who, who prey upon children there's no shortage of this so what does this say about the percentage of people even that we walk past in the street in society you have the propensity to abuse children and take advantage of them. I mean, this is not just third world, this is often this is first world stuff. The videos that I've been watching about people busting pedophiles this is happening in first world countries. First world countries. 
So first world status doesn't mean anything. Education status doesn't mean anything. I've met so many now I've been I've lived in Southeast Asia for, for quite a while. And I've as you know, Southeast Asia attracts a lot of especially Thailand attracts a lot of men because it's a sex tourism country. You get a lot of money and economy flow from sex tourism. 